Hey guys, Anthony Pichabona here, founder of AP Growth. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the top eight options trading strategies and tips I have for beginners that are just starting out, looking to become profitable. These are things that I wish I knew when I was just starting out a couple years back. If you're new here, on this channel, I post videos to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market with options trading, day trading, and swing trading. So if you're interested in that, you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up at the end if you appreciate it, and let's dive into the charts. The first tip I wish I knew when I started trading options is to sell puts on stocks that are already in an uptrend. So you wanna look at the daily time frame or the weekly time frame. Is the stock overall trending up? If it is, then that's the first thing you'll wanna know before you ever decide to sell puts on a specific stock. And I'll show you why. If you look at Tesla stock here, from left to right, just by looking at this, it looks like it is going up. When you see that on the daily chart, this is in the last year or so, then you have more confidence that it's likely to continue to trend higher. You've heard the saying, the trend is your friend. Now, what you could do is you can see levels. Well, it's run up and it looks like, you know, we might be safe if we sell puts down here at the 800 strike or the 900 strike because it's consolidating now in this range. And we know the trend is higher, so what's likely is to see consolidation in the range and then continue higher. Whereas if you take a look at a different stock, let's say we look at Robinhood, well, on the daily chart, this looks like an overall downtrend. So the problem is low can go lower and high can go higher. So where do you sell puts on this stock right here? Well, we're at an all time low, there's no support. So you might just think, well, it's sold off so aggressively. If you look back near the IPO, went from about 70 to down to 26, we're down about 62% from highs looks like a great deal. So let's say we sell puts at the 25 strike because how much lower could it go? Trust me, low can go lower. So this could just continue to sell off because there's no signs of a bottom formation. There has been no bounce. We haven't come up and broke these previous highs now at about $36 per share. So until Robinhood gets back above and fills the gap here, gets to about the high 30s, once it breaks and holds 40, then I'd be looking to sell puts because it's given us confirmation that we're done this downtrend, we're starting a new uptrend because we've held over 40 for some time. That's a sign of starting a new uptrend and you could start to look at selling puts on Robinhood. I've made this mistake in the past and it's costing me tens of thousands of dollars. So just remember, sell puts on stocks that are already in an uptrend because the probability is on your side for it to continue to go higher and it won't likely go through your strike and you won't have to take a loss. The second tip is to focus on stocks that have an implied volatility greater than 50% if you're looking to sell options. When you wanna sell calls or sell puts to collect premium, then you want a higher implied volatility to collect more in premium. So don't bother looking at stocks that are lower than 50% because you'll get a lot more returns if you just hand select those stocks that are number one in the uptrend and number two with a higher implied volatility above 50%. So on interactive brokers here, you can just pull up Tesla stock and you'll see that the implied volatility is 70%. I could pull up another name of, we could take a look at Riot. Implied volatility is 140%. We could look at some EVs, Blink, 87%. You could look at Lucid, 110%. We could look at Affirm. 80% and then if you type in something like Apple, it might be lower than 50%, 29%. So you would not want to sell calls or sell puts on a stock like Apple because the implied volatility is so low. It's typically always around 20%. So if you actually did to go sell puts, we could take a look at that. What would that look? Let's take a look at what it would look like if you sold calls or puts on Apple stock. So we'll pull out something that's one month away. So we'll look at December 31st. Perfect, 31 days away. Let's look at one standard deviation away. So one standard deviation, 1.1 is the 150 strike for puts. And on the put side, we would collect $1.39. So that's just below 1%. On the call side, if we go one standard deviation away, uh, we could do one on the dot, 177, we would collect about 0.6%. How I'm getting these percentages is because this is a dollar for 177, so if you do the math on that, it's definitely less than 1%, it's a little bit higher than half a percent, because half a percent would be about 0.85, so we're at 102, it's about 
0.6%. So on the call side, one standard deviation higher with the expiration that's one month away, you would collect 0.6%. Now on the put side, it is about 0.9% that you would collect for one month away. Now let's take a look at the same type of scenario for a stock like Riot with a high implied volatility. On Riot, if we look at an expiration that is 30 days away, we would be taking a look at the December 31st expiration. One standard deviation on the upside would be the 53 strike expiring in one month. And this one we would be collecting about 4%. Yeah, 4% because it's $2. So 10% would be $5. So this right here is 4%. 4% for one standard deviation higher. And then if we go one standard, one standard deviation lower is about 25. And on the downside there, that would be about just over 3%, about 3.5%. So 3.5% for one standard deviation on the downside, 4% for one standard deviation on the upside. So you can quickly see the differences if the implied volatility is low versus high. Now the other argument you can make is, well, one standard deviation is a lot easier to be hit in one month when there is a higher implied volatility stock. And yes, you're correct. That's exactly why the options are priced more for higher implied volatility names, because theoretically it's easier for that to go in the money and go against you if you're selling options, but you also collect more money. So what our job is, is to find higher probability trades by using chart structure, fundamentals, and stats like implied volatility. The third tip is to sell options that have less than 40 days to expiration. And this picture will sum it up. I don't even need to say anything. Just study this chart right here. This is time remaining until expiration when you sell options. Theta is the time value of the options. So what happens is when you buy a call option, every day that passes, the call option decreases in value if the stock stays the same price because the time is decreasing until expiration. So that is one of the Greeks that have the value on the options. If you don't know what the Greeks are, just search options Greeks and you'll find out how they're priced. But what you'll notice is 30 days right here, this is the curve, it falls off exponentially. So when you sell options that have less than 30 days to expiration, the value of the options decrease much more rapidly than the periods from 30 to 60, 60 to 90, and 90 to 120 and beyond. So all you need to know is you don't want to sell options that expire in three months or six months typically because look how slow the theta decay decreases. As soon as you get to about a little over 30, right where my mouse is, this is where it starts to really accelerate. And then by you know the 20 days to expiration, it falls off a cliff. So this is why I love to sell options that expire typically in two weeks. My sweet spot is honestly is two weeks, some, sometimes three weeks, but it's usually two to three weeks. Again, don't go over 40 days if you want to maximize your profits. The fourth tip is to buy options with more than four months until expiration. And guess why? the exact same thing. So if you're looking to buy options, you want to do the reverse, get as much of that theta to hold as possible while you're waiting for the move to happen. Cause if you buy call options on Tesla stock, let's say right now, right? You buy it with four months to expiration. That's 120 days. You are right here. And you think that the stock will move significantly higher in the next one to two months. Well, good for you. That's perfect because when one month passes, that only small amount has decreased in the value of your contracts. So if the move takes 30 days to happen in your favor, well, you can take your profits in 30 days and still have such a high amount of value in the options, AKA profit, when you close them out. If you think there's a big move happening in one month and you buy the 30 days expiration, well, there's two things that can happen. Let's say the big move happens in three weeks. So you're now right here where my mouse is. Well, the big move could happen and you're now break even on your call option. And you're like, how am I break even if the stock moved up significantly in three weeks? Well, because you lost so much value in theta that even though the stock went up, you lost so much value in theta that now you're break even. Plenty of times in the past, I've done this where I've bought it and it, the stock has gone up and I've lost money. You know, when I was a noob, I was like, well, how's this possible? This is exactly how it's possible. Also, 
you have to take into consideration the volatility. If the volatility contracts, then this can also happen and you can lose money, even if the stock went up. That's why you wanna choose stocks that have at least four months until expiration when you're looking to buy calls or buy puts. When you're looking to sell calls or sell puts, we use the opposite and we're looking for 40 days or 30 days or less. The fifth tip is to buy options that are already in the money or at the money. Don't buy out of the money call options. Again, huge rookie mistake. 90% of all options contracts expire worthless. So when you choose a strike that's out of the money, you're having the probabilities go against you. So especially if you're just starting out, choose at the money or slightly in the money, because again, it's gonna hold most of the value as time goes on. So if you get that move, then you're going to capture all that money. So there's two trains of thought here. If you choose a strike that is far out of the money, then you need a significant move, a really huge move to happen to go past the strike. But if it does go past the strike, you make multiples on your money. We're talking, that's when you get the 5X, 10X on your money with the call options. But if you choose a strike that's at the money and the stock goes up 10, 20%, well, your options contracts can double. You still get a 100% return. But you don't get that huge 5X or 10X moonshot if the stock goes far in the money. The reason why we choose this is because what happens is if the stock goes against you, you don't lose 50% of the value right away. Because if you choose a strike that's out of the money and then the stock has a dip, well, I'm telling you, your options will decrease by half. But if you buy calls that are already in the money or at the money, and then the stock has a dip, you may lose 10 or 20% of the value instead of 50% of the value. So you can have much more sanity and you'll be able to stomach the volatility much easier and have more faith and hold more value as the stock moves and chops around before it actually does make the move you want it to make in your favor. And we'll take a look at an example of that. If we take a look at Tesla stock, the stock's at 1130. And let's say we think that Tesla's gonna go to 1300 at some point between now and the beginning of 2022. So we might choose an expiration of about May or June to be safe. Let's say we do June 17th to give us enough time. And since we think that the stock is gonna go to about 1300, we decide to choose the 1250 strike. And we buy that. Since we think the stock's gonna go to 1300, we wanna make a lot of money, so we, we choose the 1250 strike because it's gonna be in the money at some point. This is currently out of the money. Now let's look at the profile on this. It's gonna cost us $17,000 and this is the June 17th, 2022 expiration. We're taking a look at the chart. Let's say we go to February 13th. So it's now February 13th. Well, this is what would happen if we bought this call option today when the stock is at 11.30. So it's now February 13th, a few months have passed and the stock is at 1300. Well, we're in the profit by four and a half K. Fantastic, you might be thinking. Okay, well, what if the stock trades sideways and we're now at 11.30. Well, at 11.30, we have now lost, what do you know, four and a half K. That's about 30% of a loss in a few months from the stock trading sideways. If the stock trades at 1,400, now we're starting to make a significant amount of money. It's almost 100% on your money if the stock's trading at over 1,400 by February. Okay, now let's compare that to if we chose a strike that's at the money or slightly in the money with the same expiration. Let's say we chose the 1125 strike, it will cost us 21,000, right? It would cost us more money, but let's take a look at what the numbers would be if it's now at the beginning of February, just like before. Now if the stock's 1300, our profit is $7,000, which is a little bit of higher rate of return than the previous one. And if the stock trades sideways, it's now at 1130, well, our loss will be the exact same. So basically what happens is our loss though, percentage wise is smaller and our gain is slightly higher. So just by choosing a strike that's slightly in the money compared to one that is $100 out of the money, if the stock trades sideways on a percentage base, we lose a little bit less and on a percentage gain, we gain a little bit more. Because in the previous example, our loss dollar amount was the same as the gain dollar amount when we compared what would happen if the stock was 1130 or it was 1300. But now if you take a look at it with the stock is 1400, well, the gain is 15K. On a percentage basis, this is a slightly lower return because the other example I believe is about a 14K gain. So that's almost 100% rate of return on your investment, where this one be closer to 70 or 80% if the stock's at 1400. 
So basically, you need a really huge move for the out of the money call options to make sense. And those are so much more slim to come by. So you wanna protect your capital while still getting great returns because again, this is like a 70, 80% return if the stock does go to 1400, but you protect more of a capital if the stock trades sideways or goes down. Now the segues into the sixth tip is to buy options on stocks that have a lower implied volatility than usual. So if we look at the trailing period, well, let's say one year for Tesla stock, this is the implied volatility for Tesla stock. So it's actually been quite low, around the 50% range, whereas two years ago, it was significant. If you take a look at Tesla stock right now, the implied volatility is relatively high compared to just one, two months ago. It was trading around 40%. So that would've been a great time to buy leaps, the call options that are expiring four months or later. Now, you don't collect as much money on the gains when the volatility is this high, and you're also at risk of the volatility dropping back below in the coming months to this level right here. And if it does that and the stock doesn't move, you lose a lot in the value of your call contracts. So you wanna focus on stocks that had a higher implied volatility and have been decreasing if you also think that there is a move in a certain direction on the stock. So let's take a look at some other stocks. An example would be Apple stock. You know, In the past year or so, it was higher above 30%, trading closer to 40%. It dropped all the way down to the low 20%, and now it's at the high 20s, which means buying the calls or puts on Apple stock are still a relatively good decision. It's not a bad idea because in the history, it's still at a decently low area. On Riot, the implied volatility had always been around 100% when we had Bitcoin trading like crazy. The beginning of the middle of the year, it dropped below 100%. It dropped all the way down to 100%, and then that would have been a good time on relative terms to buy calls or buy puts if you thought it was going to go in a certain direction. But now, again, it spikes to 160%, and now it's at 140%. So, you know, theoretically speaking, it's about at the average of what has been trading in the last two years. So it's not a horrible time to buy calls or puts on this kind of stock. But again, you want to look for the implied volatility being lower than what it previously usually is. A good example here would be on a stock like Workhorse because it's at 100% and previously it's been trading usually around 120% on average. So theoretically, it's a little bit lower. So if you thought it's going to go in a certain direction, you would trade it there. The seventh options trading tip I wish I knew was to follow the VIX and follow the SPY. The VIX is the volatility of the S&P 500 and the VIX moves with the SPY. So when the SPY goes down, the VIX goes up and vice versa. So when the, the SPY is consistently going higher, then volatility decreases. You want to sell options when the VIX is high. You want to buy options when the VIX is low. So you just pull up the daily chart here for the VIX and you'll scroll back to see historical volatility. And what you'll see is ever since COVID hit, you know, we spiked up to 60 and we've been holding it usually above 20 for the VIX, which is high in the history, which means that there's a lot of volatility in the markets. And which is good, it's good for traders, really good for traders to make more money. It's also good to sell options on. So you'll see these, these spikes. What you wanna do is you want to make a, some sort of rule with yourself to follow. One of them could be to never sell options when the VIX is 16 or below. So if we scroll back all the way to pre-COVID, you'll see that there was low volatility back in the 2016s and 2017s where the VIX was trading around 13, 14, 15 as high as about 18, sometimes hitting 20. But now we're up above 20 now for the most of the time. So one rule you could make now in this market is that you're not going to sell options when the VIX is below 18. So if you see my mouse here, my mouse is at 18 right now. So it means anytime we're at my mouse there or below, we're not going to sell options. We actually want to buy options when it's that low. So anytime the VIX gets to 20 or above, you want to load the boat on selling options because when we're at here, 20 above, we don't last long. We spike up towards high 20s and then we sell off in, on, in terms of volatility and we decrease the low 20s and usually break 20s for a bit. Create some sort of setup because this also means you don't want to be buying options when the VIX is much above 20. You definitely don't want to be buying options where my mouse is right now. The VIX is at 26 you need to be careful buying options because you're paying more in premiums. Like I said, when volatility is higher, we pay more in premium. So you don't wanna be buying options when the VIX is where it is right now. You do wanna be selling options right now. So what you could do is, again, like a rule of thumb, when the VIX is above 20, you're not going to buy options. When the VIX is below 18, you're not going to sell options. The eighth and final tip, possibly most important tip, is to manage your position sizing to 10% or less and manage your risk 
per trade to 2% of total capital or less. If you're buying calls, you don't want any position to be 10% of your account size or greater. Ideally, you wanna keep it to about 5% and you wanna manage your risk so that way you never lose more than 2% of your total capital per trade. So what this would look like is, let's say you have a $100,000 account, you're not gonna put more than $10,000 in one trade and you're not going to let yourself lose more than $2,000 because that's 2% of your entire capital. This is a game changer because what could happen is you could YOLO on a one trade or put half your account on one trade, it could go down 50% and then you wiped out 50% of your account or 25% of your entire account and it becomes so much harder to make the gains back to get back to where you were at. Here is something we all need to know, the math of a big loss. A loss of 10% requires an 11% gain to recover which is manageable. However, as the loss grows, the size of the return needed to recover increases at a faster pace. A 50% loss requires a 100% gain to recover, and an 80% loss requires a 400% gain just to get back to break even. This is why we use rules to manage losses so that way those losses don't get huge and we don't blow up our account. Because like I said, it's so much easier to recover from a 10% loss, but a 50% loss requires a 100% gain. To recap, the first tip is to sell puts on stocks in an overall uptrend with strong support. The second tip is to sell options on stocks with implied volatility above 50%. The third tip is to sell options with less than 40 days to expiration for max theta decay. The fourth tip is to buy options with more than six months to expiration for low theta decay. The fifth is to buy options at the money for greatest probability of making money. The sixth is to buy options on stocks that have a lower implied volatility than usual. The seventh is to follow the VIX and SPY, sell options when the VIX is above 18 and do not buy options when the VIX is above 20. The eighth and final is a max 10% capital per options position and a max 2% capital loss. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market, you're going to want to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.